everyone, welcome back to another video. Today is going to be part five of my series where I'm showing you how to improve your coloring skills and bringing you lots of tips and tricks and hacks and all kinds of different things that you can add to your coloring pages so that you can improve the way that they look or improve your skills. So today, you guys have requested that I add to this series how to create white with your Prismacolors. So we are going to do that today in this video. And I don't know if you saw my last video, but that's where it was so highly requested because I showed you guys a really simple hack to be able to create black. So if you haven't already seen that video, I'll make sure that's linked in the upper right hand corner and you can go back and watch that. But today we are going to work again in Romantic Country by Erie, a fantasy coloring book. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a demonstration for you on my favorite paper, the Spring Hill paper. And then I'm going to bring it into the book and see if we can accomplish kind of what I have in my head and what I wanna get down or out of my head onto paper and try to do that actually on the coloring page. So that's what we're gonna to do today. Please do subscribe to my channel and turn your bell notifications on so that you're always notified every time I post a new video. And if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up because that's what helps my videos to get in front of the eyes of other colorists or people wanting to learn how to use their Prismacolors in this case. If you check the description box below, you will find a link down there to my Facebook group. I would love to have you over there. And there will also be a link to my email list. If you join my email list, you will get a copy of a color swatching chart that you can swatch all of your favorite colored pencils. And I also have a link down there for my Patreon if you would like to support me over there. I am so excited to bring you this video and I cannot wait to share with you how I create white on white paper. So let's go ahead and get into this video. When you're using your Prismacolors, you can create white so many different ways. You've got your warm whites and your cool whites, just like you do with any other of the colors. Like when I showed you in my previous video, how we created black, and I put two different colors together to create black. I showed you in that video how to create a warmer black, and then what you would do to create a cooler black. So there are many different things when you're coloring that can be white. I have showed you in a previous video how to color white when coloring snow, and that was a really great video, and it was another one that was so highly requested. But if you haven't seen that, I'll make sure that is linked in the upper right hand corner. Today, we're not gonna color snow, but I'm gonna show you how I put some colors together and I'm gonna use this Spring Hill paper and we are going to color in this box here that I drew out and we are going to just kind of put all of these colors together and create something that looks white. Now, do remember that we need to add our, it needs to be white, but we need to have depth and we need to have our highlights and we need to have shadows, just as if you were coloring anything else on a coloring page. So I'm gonna show you how to create it on this Spring Hill paper here, and then I'm gonna bring it over to the coloring book, and I have an idea of what I wanna color in the coloring book, and since I already showed y'all how to color snow, I'm kind of bringing that idea over but it's not so much the same thing because we are actually going to go to the book and we are going to try to color some white wood, which is going to be really interesting. I've not attempted it yet, so I'm attempting it for the first time on camera with y'all, so stay tuned for that. But first I'm gonna show you the colors that I have kind of pulled and put together. Now, white is not just white. White is kind of a mix of lots of different colors, and these are the colors that I have pulled out. And we are just going to, like I've showed you in some previous videos, where we did some color blending, where you kind of put colors together and you lay them over one another and you blend them together to create different colors. I showed you that 
a little bit closer in my previous video that went live I think yesterday or the day before where I showed you my favorite highlight colors and I did a little color blending and swatching and kind of showed you how to blend the colors together to create other colors and the differences. I'll also link that one in the upper right hand corner if you missed that one. I have slate gray. We're not going to use a lot of the slate gray, but that is going to be our color that is for our shadows. And when we use the slate gray, we are going to have a very, very, very light hand because we definitely don't want a, light of a lot of that. And I believe this is the one color that I used when I was showing you how to create snow. So next I have cloud blue which is a fantastic color to use when you're trying to create white. I have my white. The next color I have is my 10% cool gray, and then I went up also to my 20% cool gray because I just think the cool grays are prettier than the warm grays. I don't know, to me they're just kind of happier than the warmer colors. I just like the way that they lay down on the paper better and the look that they give me a little bit better. So we've got our 10% cool gray and our 20% cool gray. And then we have our blue slate that we're gonna to use to create a little bit of depth with. And it's gonna take those colors to try to kind of just mix them together so that we can get the look that we're going for. And you have to remember that the paper is white, so we want our object on the paper to show up as white, but the white, when you're coloring white, you actually use a lot of grays and other colors and you mix them together so that that object stands out off the page but still looks white. Let's go ahead and see what we can create here. So I'm going to start out, I think, with my 10% cool gray. And I'm just going to start laying some of this color down. And do you see how this is just so close to white? And so on the white paper, it's just going to create that texture that you want if you're trying to color something that's white. Now, if I was coloring something like a snowman or something, of course I would color it very differently than if I was coloring like white wood or something else that was white. So since I've already done snow on my channel, I didn't want to do something that kind of reflected snow again. I wanted to do something a little bit different. So this is my cloud blue and I'm kind of just adding a little bit of this in. And the reason that I use the cloud blue when I create white is because the blue just kind of, I don't know, it gives it like a little bit of a happier it makes it so that it's not so dull and it just when I look at it it just I don't know it makes it a little bit happier I guess but it's still a very calm color so let me go up here in the corners where I believe that my texture would be and I'm gonna use the blue slate and I'm gonna use a very light hand and I'm just going to use this flicking type motion and I'm just going to add some of this in here but I do not want too much at all because it will show up blue. I probably pushed a little bit too hard. So I'm going to come back with my cloud blue. And I'm going to bring this back through and kind of get some of that out of there. And if you end up laying down a little bit too much blue, like I did here with the, uh, was that the slate blue? No, slate gray. Yeah, blue slate. I'm going to show you a little trick to get rid of that, but that's next. <laughs> so now I'm coming back with my 10% cool gray and I'm kind of just blending these colors together so that it doesn't look blue, it doesn't look gray. We're just kind of creating our textures and creating our depth and just kind of blending all these colors together. Now see, I used pencil to create this box, so I think some of the pencil is kind of getting pulled in a little bit, which is probably not good, but you guys know that I always fix everything. <laughs> okay, so we've got quite a few colors down now, 
And what I'm going to do now is I think I'm going to go ahead and use my white on this part of it. And I'm just going to kind of come over this. And since this time I'm not really coloring wood, it's okay if I kind of burnish these colors together. So I'm kind of like showing you two different ways that you guys can do this. So I just want to get it down on the paper to show you what it would look like on white paper. And then we're going to bring it to the coloring book. So this is kind of two lessons in one. I was so excited to do this video and I know so many of you were waiting for this video and like asking me and asking me. Now comes in the very cool part where we really want to make it look like it's white. Now this would be very different. Like if I was coloring fur on an animal, I would do that very differently because I would need to make sure you could see the fur and then still see the white. So I would be using a very different method and I would be using my pencils in a very different way to create that texture so that it looks like fur. So if you wanna see a video on that, <laughs> I always do this in every single video. I'm like, if you would like to see a video on that, let me know in the comments. If you would like me to show you some different ways that you can use this white hack, I guess do we want to call it that, more tricks, tricks and tips and hacks and all of that. Like I've gotten so carried away with this series, but I know you guys are really loving this series. So I will keep bringing them these videos to you as long as you want to see them. Okay, so I've got my Posca now. And I'm getting rid of that dark line around my box. And I want to kind of spread that out so that it doesn't look like a thick mass of white. But this is how I do white. I mean, like I said, there's other artists and such on YouTube and I don't know, when I went to go look and I tried to find videos on YouTube to see if anybody had done a video like this before I did my, because I like to do videos that like nobody else has done because I don't know if you guys know how YouTube works, but if you do videos that nobody else has done, then YouTube ends up picking it up in their algorithm and they send your videos out to other people which is really good for my channel because that's what helps my channel to really grow and of course that's my objective it's grown so fast already I want to thank all of you for just watching my videos and really supporting me in all of this because this channel has taken off more than I could have ever ever imagined or dreamed I mean, it started out as I just was going to make one video because somebody in my Facebook group had asked me how to do one simple thing and it turned into this. <laughs> and I have always been one of those people that was just like, nope, never doing YouTube, not doing YouTube, not me. <laughs> and I don't know what happened. <laughs> Okay, so if you look at this, I don't know how well you can see this on camera, and I'm hoping that you could see it. Let me zoom you in just a little. Hopefully you could see it, but after we put the white Posca on, like you can see the shading of this, and if there was other stuff around this, you would be able to, it would really stand out as white. Now you can come back and you can add a few more of your colors, kind of like this, just to give it a little bit more depth and dimension. But look how cool that is. See y'all, we just created white. Is that so neat? And then let me add a little bit more of my 10%. I mean, you could keep coming back and you can add more color to it until it is the level of, I guess, white that you want to see on your coloring page. And let me go ahead and add just a little bit more of my cloud blue because like I told you earlier, the cloud blue to me just kind of gives the white a more 
I don't know, a happier feel. And then I'm going to come back and I am going to go over this with my actual white pencil just to make it a little bit whiter. But can you see all the texture and the depth and the dimension and everything? And we just created white because white is not necessarily white. White is just a few different shades that come together to create that effect that when the eye or when somebody else's eye looks at your coloring page or your piece of art, they are going to see white. So like if you were coloring a dog or a bunny or a cat or something like that and you wanted it to be white, you would just put all of these colors together, a mixture of the colors, and you would just create texture and dimension and everything just like this. And if you had other things kind of around it or you had a background, this would really stand out as white and it would have texture and depth and dimension. And we've got a few little highlights in there that I added in with the white pencil, but you could also use the white of your paper like I've showed you all in previous videos. Let's go ahead and move on to the coloring book now. Okay, y'all, so here we are on the page where I've been demonstrating all of my tips and tricks and hacks and everything of that sort. So we are going to color this chair together and I just thought that it would be really cool. I don't know, I just thought it would really be really cool to make the chair look like it was white wood. I don't know, what do y'all think? <laughs> I always talk to you guys and then I'm just like, well, nobody can answer me, so you know. <laughs> so let's go ahead and come in here like we did in the box. And we are going to start with our cool gray and we're going to see what we can come up with. I'm just going to start adding some of this cool gray and lay this down first and I, I don't know, I have something in my head like that I want to see on the paper, but I just don't know yet how I'm going to create it. And I saw somebody in my Facebook group the other day and Gosh, I think it might have been Kim, one of my moderators, maybe, talking about do you have something in your head and then you go and lay it down onto the page and it comes out completely different. So many people were like, yes, all the time. And I was like, oh, always. Every single time that I sit down to color, I always have something in my head or how I want the end result to be but it does not usually ever end up that way. Sometimes I'm really impressed and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is even better than I had imagined. Other times, not so much. But this one's gonna be a little bit tricky, so we need to really keep an eye on the parts of the chair that are laying behind the other parts. And I'm trying to keep this 10% cool gray out of the areas where I want to be able to keep a highlight. But I want the chair to look white if somebody were actually looking at it. So I grabbed my 30% cool gray because I don't know if just the 10 and the 20 are gonna work well enough. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of the blue in here too, just to kind of brighten it up a little bit. This is the cloud blue. And like I said before, this is just a lot of blending the different colors together. Like this is adding blue, but once we bring in the other colors and we lay the other colors down with it to blend all the colors together, this is not going to look blue anymore. And this color does have blue in it, but this color also has a lot of white in it too. Because it's such a pale, pale blue. It's a gorgeous color. I love this color for highlights. I 
I have never ever tried to color white wood before so this is going to be fun and you guys know that I'm always when I make, make these videos and I bring these videos to you I'm kind of experimenting with these things while I'm showing them to you at the same time okay so let's try let's try the 30% cool gray and I'm gonna come in here and start just trying to add some shadows. And I'm only doing this where I see the parts of the chair that would be laying behind other parts. And then here where the hat is kind of laying over the chair, I want those areas darker as well. Now, when you're doing this, you want your chair to look white, but of course to add the dimension and the depth and all of the things that you want to add so that it pops off the page you can't have just a flat white image. So just by bringing all of these colors together, you are creating a look to where somebody is going to look at your page and they're going to see a white chair. And so all of the dimension and the depth and the shadows and everything that you're creating is going to help the eye to be able to see that. Because if you've ever looked at white wood or you've seen furniture that is, you know, the lighter wood or the of shades of white, it's never completely white. And I think this color is doing really well. I don't, don't know if I'm going to need a darker color. I really like this combined with that blue cloud or the cloud blue. And don't worry with the grays if you think that you laid too much down because it's when the grays are this light, unless you're really going hard with them, you're probably fine. I think now we need a little bit more shadows. So I'm going to attempt something here and I'm going to use my blue slate and I'm just going to come in the corners. I think I need to sharpen this. So of course, always with my doll 133, you guys know I am obsessed, more than obsessed, with this pencil sharpener. <laughs> I cannot live without it. It is the best thing ever created. And those of you that love your colored pencils as much as I do, you know how important it is to have the perfect pencil sharpener. Okay, so it may be looking a little bit more blue, but once we start to come in and lay down some more of the colors and blend them together, It is going to look way different. So if you haven't seen my video on how to color snow, like that was a true white and it came out so beautiful. But I will make sure that that video is linked so that y'all could go back and see that. But it came out so great. It looked like some just white fluffy snow. I loved how it turned out. Okay, so we added a little bit of that. I think in here where this should look like it's laying behind, we probably should do a little bit more of that. And I'm going really slow because I am still unsure. <laughs> so I'm gonna come in now with my 30% gray. 
And I'm going to add some more shadows in these areas here. I think I'm going to try to pull up an image of some white wood or very light pale wood on my computer screen in front of me. If you guys are ever kind of stuck or you don't know what it is you're trying to do and you need a little bit of guidance, always look at an image of that particular item so that you can get some ideas. Reference photos are so, so important. And they really help a lot. Now, since this is wood, we are going to need texture. So as I start laying down some of this color, I'm going to start having to add a little bit of texture with this. And I'm wondering if I'm going to use the Posca on this one or give my Posca a break. <laughs> I'm thinking I may need to use the Posca. So my next step is just to take the slate gray and very, very lightly in all the areas where there is going to be a drastic shadow because something is laying over that area, I'm just going to add this color in those spaces. I'm going to come back with my 20% cool gray and I am going to just kind of go over all of those areas where I just laid that blue so that this way it doesn't look blue and again we're just kind of blending those shades together to create a different color I'm going to come in with my 30% cool gray and I am just going to try to add a little bit of texture in here with this color.
Now I have my 50% cool gray and I am going to go over all of the areas where like where all these little lines are and stuff and I am just going to create a little bit more depth and dimension in these areas. Let's go ahead and get our white pencil and we are just going to come over some of this and kind of blend some of it together. And this will also add in the highlights we need to make it look even whiter. But I'm only going in certain areas because I want it to look white. I don't want it to look I want it to look white, but I still want it to have the depth and the dimension that I have created with the other colors by blending all of them together. And I'm thinking that I may use my Posca in a much different way for this. I think the white is really helping to bring it together. So I wasn't going to burnish it out, but it's looking like the white pencil is just really making it come together. And this is why I tell you guys all the time that you just need to experiment because what you originally imagined in your head before you started coloring and trying to bring it together may be completely different from what you end up with and you just kind of got to go with it, right? <laughs> okay, so I've laid all of that out and kind of burnished it a little bit. Now remember, if I had an actual background laid down with this, this would look much different and the white of the chair would just really pop. But you can keep coming back and adding some more layers of white. And this is just going to continue to make it look whiter. But your other colors that you had in here that you had blended together, they are all just, they're going to remain and they're gonna stay there but it just is giving it more dimension because you're adding the white in those areas to create a bigger contrast between the colors. Now, if I had a background, I probably would come back with my Posca and add my Posca in certain areas. I might even want to do that. I wonder what would happen if I just kind of highlighted a little bit with the Posca and then added in a few more shadows. Let me go ahead and get, which gray do I want to use? I think I want to try my 30% cool gray. I don't want to add any more blue to this, but I'm going to get my 30% cool gray and I am just going to go over these lines. That's not actually dark enough to add the texture that I want. So let me go to 50%. So 50% cool gray. And we are just going to re-add in some of the lines that the artist originally drew. Oh, this makes a huge difference. So look at this. This is adding so much dimension.
Oh, this definitely works. This is the perfect color. Oh, that works so well. I hope you guys can see that on camera. So let's just come back into all these areas where it should be darker because we have something laying on top. So now I'm just coming through with my 10% cool gray and I'm just kind of pulling this out where I've got some of the darker shading because this is going to be the closest color that you can get down on your coloring page that is going to be that closely related to your white because it's basically 10%, only 10% gray. So when you're talking about 10% gray, it's basically a mixture of white and gray. And then I'm just taking this and like lining it here to make sure I get my shadows in there. And then I'm going to come back and pull it out just a little bit more with this. But I think that I have as much dimension and depth and all of that that I'm going to be able to get without making it look anymore like it is not white. And I do want to come in with my Posca and I want to just add a little bit of white highlights. So like right in here and then make sure you come in and you tap it out. Oh, look at the difference there. So this is how we create white, guys. I love how this turned out. And I'm kind of going in the areas where I didn't have where I didn't have the darker colors, where I was trying to create depth, so I'm kind of going um, kind of in and out of those areas. Because I still want to be able to see that. Otherwise, I'm gonna lose that depth and dimension. Now, if you were to lay a background down behind this, you would get a whole different look that would be absolutely amazing because it would really even more so look white. Look at that dimension. 
It's like I love this Posca, I don't want to stop. <laughs> Okay, I think that's good enough. I think you guys get the idea. But I love the way that it turned out. And again, if you had something behind it and you had like a background or whatever, or especially a color that would be completely contrasting with that, any color is really going to be contrasting with white. But this white has some blue in it, so you would have to find a color that is not going to really intensify the blue if you wanted it to look more white. And so, I don't know, maybe something like a brown or something in the background. I wouldn't use yellow because yellow is contrasting to blue, and it would really just bring the blue out so much more. But there's so many different things that you can do to intensify that white and make it look whiter and take away the blue it's kind of all about just um, color theory and kind of messing with the colors and trying to kind of experiment a little bit a lot of times when i'm coloring and i'm kind of stuck on a coloring page i will use google to my benefit and i will go and i will search anything that i'm trying to find out about or anything that i'm trying to learn i'm kind of one of those people that i just always teach myself everything like if there is something that I want to learn, I will really research it and I will learn it and I will practice it until I just figure it out and I've mastered that skill. And it's, I don't know, I guess it's like a really good quality to have, but sometimes it could be not so great because sometimes you could really drive yourself crazy. <laughs> But I really love the way that it turned out. I hope you all did too. If you have any recommendations, please leave those in the comments below of what you would like to see in this tips and tricks and hacks on how to improve your coloring skills series. And I will see if I can make that happen for y'all. Everything that you've seen in this video, I will put in the description box below so that if you are interested and you would like to purchase those things for yourself, you can. The Posca pen, all of the colors that I used, I'll just put the 100 and a link to the 150 set of Prisma colors down there because I think it's still on a really good deal right now on Amazon. But I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Happy coloring. Bye.